Believe me, this is true. Looking back 13.35 billion years to the source of light, which is shortly after the Big Bang, as the James Webb Space Telescope brought us a little closer to God, well, that's what most people think. The telescope's new discoveries are shocking all religious people, even though I still don't see why. But the thing is, we are facing a paradigm shift that challenges not only our science, but also religious ideas about the universe. Join us on this cosmic journey, the City of God, James Webb Telescope's terrifying new discovery shocks all religious people. The last time there was such a revolution was when Galileo Galilei discovered that the Earth is not the center of creation, and when, 100 years ago, the universe pulled an uno reverse on scientists, making them realize that the Milky Way is not the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is one of the most impressive scientific instruments humans have ever created. I guess you already know all of this, but with its ability to peer deep into the universe and gather light from the earliest stars and galaxies, this telescope is far more than just a technical instrument. It's a symbol of mankind's search for truth. Galileo Galilei said, Nature is a relentless judge who forces us to strive for knowledge. Many people believe that we can only understand the inexorable nature if we have found God at the same time. Perhaps it was God himself who put the spirit of inquiry in us to discover the secrets of the universe. And perhaps him or her, we do not know what God really is or whether this entity truly exists. Science is not just for our curiosity or our fear of a nature we cannot control and a universe so gigantic that we feel like nothing in it. Science should also provide us with answers to the deepest questions of our existence. Even though the JWST and the entire scientific mission of humans can be seen as divine in this context, there are religious currents that vehemently reject all new knowledge and science. The JWST has made such shocking discoveries that even science is currently amazed. It has observed some of the oldest known galaxies, more than 13.7 billion years old, and it has provided evidence for the existence of water in the atmospheres of exoplanets. These discoveries could take our understanding of how the universe formed and how life exists in it to a whole new level. If the JUST finds the first evidence of life on other planets, then we must realize, whether religious or not, that God did not create just one world, but many. One particularly fascinating aspect that is now coming into focus more than ever before is the multiverse. Previously dismissed as nonsense by conservative science, the latest shocking discoveries make it increasingly likely that multiple universes exist. Fascinatingly, the world's three major religions do not recognize this idea and even oppose it. But in Asia, it's quite different. The Vedas describe the existence of many worlds inhabited by gods, demons, and other beings. But we don't have to go that far to find the idea of the multiverse in religion. The Germanic mythology of nine different worlds created by the gods is nothing other than a multiverse. Such parallels could indicate that the scientific discoveries of the JWST have a deeper spiritual dimension and that we are on the verge of reuniting religion and science. In ancient times, this was quite normal. The two disciplines were inseparable. Mathematics, music, mechanics, everything was considered divine and therefore also religious. The reasons why church leaders and other religious rulers rebelled against modern astronomical discoveries must therefore be of a different nature. Who doesn't know the name Galileo Galilei today? The great mathematician and astronomer lived in Italy from 1564 to 1642. What hardly anyone knows today, however, are the problems Galileo had to contend with. Galileo was the first to improve the telescope and the resulting astronomical observations led him to the heliocentric view of the world. The scientists discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter, the phases of Venus, sunspots, and the uneven surface of the moon, which provided evidence for the heliocentric model. Galileo lived during the Renaissance, a time of intellectual and cultural change in Europe. This era was characterized by great advances in art, science, and literature. But at the same time, there was still strong religious control by the Catholic Church, especially in the early days of this era. The Church had no interest in reviving the old scientific worldview of antiquity and saw the teachings of the ancient sages as a threat to its power and world order. This included, for example, the advocacy of the geocentric view of the world, 
which was based on the teachings of the ancient astronomer Claudius Ptolemy and the writings of the Bible. This model placed the Earth at the center of the universe and was seen as the only true divinely ordered structure. When Galileo publicly advocated the heliocentric model, he got himself into a lot of trouble with the church. The Inquisition was something of a counter-movement to the Renaissance. All modern ways of thinking, naturopathy, and disciplines such as astrology, which were still highly valued in ancient times, were to be destroyed. In 1616, the Inquisition declared the heliocentric view of the world, first postulated by Nicholas Copernicus, to be heretical. Galileo was brought before a church court in 1633, convicted of heresy, and forced to recant his views. The scientist was allowed to live, but he spent the rest of his life under house arrest. The church's rigid attitude towards the heliocentric model was officially due to the fact that the Bible portrays the earth and humanity as the center of God's creation. Any challenge to this worldview was seen as a threat to its authority in the divine order, or the power of the church. If it had become public that the church had distorted the truth, this would have diminished its power. Giordano Bruno, another Italian scientist, was hit even harder. He was once a priest, but also loved astronomy. Bruno went a step further than Galileo. He postulated the infinity of the universe and the existence of countless inhabited worlds. These ideas could have been visionary, but for Bruno, his genius ended at the stake. The church regarded Bruno's ideas as extremely dangerous and gave him a lengthy trial to deter other researchers. Bruno died a senseless death as a heretic in 1600. The church only apologized for these crimes in modern times. But did you know that the Catholic Church has never fully recognized the modern findings of science? One of the lesser known facts today is that it was a priest who came up with the Big Bang Theory. For the Belgian Georges Lemaitre, religion and science were not contradictions. He said that while science deals with the how of the universe, religion explains the why. Lemaitre held the view that scientific discoveries and religious beliefs can coexist harmoniously as long as they focus on their respective areas. Pope Pius XII first commented on the Big Bang Theory in 1951, saying in a brief statement that the Big Bang could also be seen as a divine act of creation. Nevertheless, it naturally became clear that the stories of the Bible could not be truths, but merely allegories. God certainly did not create the earth in a week. Incidentally, Islam also has an almost identical creation story. Allah created the earth in six days, and there was a man and a woman who resembled Adam and Eve. Let's take a closer look at the idea of the Christian, Islamic, and Jewish creation stories. The apparent accuracy of the ideas reflected in the respective holy scriptures is astonishing. Six days of creation, and man was there first. And of course, the man is right and can command everything. The animals and the earth belong to man. Now let's look at the scientific findings. The Big Bang was an event that lasted less than a second, and a measly nine billion years passed before the earth appeared. Maybe that's really no more than a week in God's kingdom, but we need a lot of imagination. We now know that humans were not there first either, but the plants and animals were. That doesn't quite fit with many church people, and certainly not with the realization that humans were once animals and still are to some extent today. Is the earth flat or round? Is it the center of the universe or just one part of countless others? Is the universe finite or infinite? And above all, are there several universes? Even those who are not religious are influenced by such new findings on a metaphysical level. An infinite universe would mean that our science has so far understood absolutely nothing and that the universe challenges our human understanding. There are Buddhist monks and believers in Asia for whom the idea of infinity is not a spiritual problem. They even claim to be able to see the infinity of the universe with the third eye. It's only our Western science and us normal people who have a very narrow view of the world due to our education. We also believe that only one or the other can be true, whereas quantum mechanics, for example, shows us that there can be countless variations of reality side by side. If the James Webb Telescope now proves the Big Bang never happened and that the universe is infinite, this will blow up the old science. And that is probably a good thing because we are no longer getting anywhere.
the JWST is currently driving our science up the wall on several levels, and the researchers are resigning themselves. Our knowledge and our methods can no longer describe the universe as it now appears. What does this mean? A return to metaphysics? Or is the long overdue unification of quantum physics and classical physics about to happen? In quantum mechanics, scientists are researching particles that carry all the information in the universe and can be in several places and at several times simultaneously. Quanta are the basic building blocks of matter. If these particles have such properties, we have to reckon with the fact that the world of matter is not what we think it is. It could be an illusion, a changeable projection. And there is even evidence that we ourselves create this world. Would that then mean that we ourselves are God? Possibly. There are certainly views and even scientific theories that God is everything we can see, an infinite consciousness and an intelligence that is beyond our normal mental comprehension. But if this is the case and God is in each of us, then we should still be able to discover him and the blueprint or idea of the cosmos. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic journey. Tell us your opinions in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the video on your screen for more mind-bending content. Until next time, keep gazing at the stars. This is Cosmic Inquiries, signing off.